We have been traveling the rich fertile lands of Kenya, far and wide, across the highlands and lowlands of this beautiful country, talking to farmers wherever we go. We want to give them the help and knowledge they need to improve their farming methods, increase their income, and turn around their farms into good business for the future. Join us and our experts on this journey and share their families' experiences as they make the changes. Karibu to Shamba Ship Up Safari. Welcome to Shamba Shepherd. The program that advises you on how to make your shamba a better shamba for you, your family, and your animals. And we are back again at Eshebe village in Kakamega. Welcome. Previously, we visited Arthur and his wife Priscilla. They have a shamba over seven acres and there's a lot to shape up. His banana plantation is over seven years old and needed re-establishing into a new location. In fact, we told Arthur about pest diseases affecting his crops, especially the fruits and the vegetables. We also advised them on fake chemicals and what to look out for. In fact, there was so much work to do that the shamba shape up team decided to come back. So how are you doing this morning, Arthur? I'm doing okay. Well, we are back in your farm. Are you happy to see us? I'm happy. Good, good. Now tell us, what can we help you with today? Today, you can help me how I can get water on my farm for irrigation. Irrigation? And the nut section is egg production. I like it to improve. Improved eggs production. Yes. And the oil pump plantation, where the fruits are disturbed by birds, making uh -huh. me produce less oil. Oh, okay. Yeah. okay. Well, that seems like a lot. So I say we get started right now. Yeah, let's yeah. see okay. what we can do to shape up your shamba. Yeah. Let's go for it. Thank you. Naomi Ada is doing great, but he can do better. It will just be step after step with great, great advice from our experts. Do you like eggs? Yes. Why? Uh, I'm thinking maybe we should talk to Arthur. Like he said, he would like to see more egg production. Ah, yes, yes. And what will you be doing? Well, never mind. I'll tell you later. Uh, so secretive. <laughs> uh, oh, good. Our friend Moses from Kenchik is here. How are you, Moses? I'm good. Good to see you here. Yeah. Now, Tata, you said you had a problem with your layers. Yeah. Well, this is an expert. Open up. Let's have a look. Thank you. After you, sir. Friend of Shamba Shepa, Dr. Moses Owino from Kenchik is a veterinary officer. And by having a good look around at others' layers, he will be able to give him some expert advice. <laughs> Moses, it seems like uh, we've collected lots and lots of eggs and we've been in there. What, what do you think? What did, uh, do you think he's doing well? Okay, uh, first of all, how many chicken do you have? I bought 570. 570? Yeah. And uh, in a day, you collect like how many eggs? As you said, I collected 433. 433, so yeah. that is roughly 80%. Of course. Okay, um, slightly good, but uh, you can do better. Because uh, at the second of man month of production, you should actually be doing something like 90%. Okay. So there are a few changes here and there that I've noticed that you need to do yes. that uh, will improve productivity. Yeah. Yes. So what should we do? Okay, I've uh, noticed uh, there's a problem with your feeders. Mm -hmm. You realize there are some feeders that are low. The level of the feeders are low. So you find that the birds are climbing on top. Some of them are contaminating the feed through their feces, you need to correct that. The other thing that I've seen is that uh, some of your feeders uh, are not very good. You actually have to go in, shake it for the feed to come down. Because uh, you could see when I touched a feeder, mm -hmm. the birds were coming in. They are rushing in as if that is the time I'm putting in the feed, mm -hmm. while actually the feed was in the feeder. Mm -hmm. So they are, you are getting actually partial starvation while the, 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 feed, food is there. the, the feed is there. The other thing is the type of uh, drinkers that they're using. You know, birds are supposed to take twice as much as they're eating. If they're, they're taking roughly one kilo, you'll expect that at the minimum, the bird should drink like two liters. 
the kind of jerry cans you have modified as jinkers, yeah. they are open and the dust is getting into the water. The moment that water is dirty, you can be sure the birds are not drinking as much as they should. They are just testing the water. And water contributes to productivity. If you get this egg, you find that 70% of it is water. Okay. So if their birds are not getting water, it means that even the productivity will go below the standard. So we need to change the drinkers and the feeders and uh, is that all? No. Uh, the other thing that uh, we should do that I noticed, there's a lot of dust in the house. Uh -huh. And that one is actually increasing the stress level to the birds. When the birds are stressed, you'll start getting some abnormal behaviors like uh, pecking, cannibalism, and also even the production will go down. Again, on the disease control, we are standing at the entrance and I can see there's no foot bath. You need to ensure always there's a foot bath at the entrance so that you don't carry diseases to your birds. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now if he does all that, he's going to get a 100% egg collection, is it? 100? Uh, no, you cannot get 100. 99.9.9? .9. No, no. Okay. But you'll get good production that is profitable. We'll get somewhere? Yes. Then let's get started then. While Tony and Arthur get started on the chicken house, I want to help Arthur's wife Priscilla, who suffers from severe asthma. This is a kitchen where the ladies in this homestead cook from. It's usually very smoky, it affects their chest as well as their eyes. So Priscilla, uh, I noticed that the kitchen is very smoky mm. and it must be a problem to you and the, the ladies who cook there. Is it? Yeah, it has invited us, disturbed us a lot. Mm -hmm. There's a time even when we decided to, to cook from out, we used to cook outside. Right. Because we feared the smoke. Mm -hmm. Right. So whenever I go there, mm -hmm. first they will make fire. I don't want those small woods which will produce a lot of smoke. Right. I just want some good wood. Okay. Bio, but it will help. Okay. So now we, if, if we fix it, that would be a very good thing for yeah. everyone. Yeah, for everyone. Even me. Yeah, exactly. Even for you. Because yeah. I know you miss going back to the kitchen. Because we are used to the kitchen. Yeah. yeah we you know. don't believe in anybody's cooking. We are cooking, yes. It may be, you may, you may cook bad food, but when you have cooked yourself, you will blame yeah, yourself. Yeah, I know, you blame yourself. That is, that is true. That is true. But when somebody else cooks, and yeah. you don't feel, you don't feel all right, you yeah. feel bad. Yeah. Yeah, so we are used to the kitchen. Okay. So it will help me a lot. Smoke is a big problem as it is very bad for your eyes and your lungs, for your health generally. I've arranged for a builder to make the chimney higher, which will reduce the amount of smoke staying in the kitchen building. A chimney needs to be above roof level by at least two feet. I can feet. see the work on the chimney is in progress. That's nice. But I'm sure glad I'm not one of the experts on the roof. While I'm busy improving the kitchen, I wonder how Tony's getting on. Arthur has had some top tips to make sure his layers produce more eggs. We are starting work on improving the chicken house. First, you need to clean up all the dust. You can do that using a mop, and if you can't get a mop, you can make one on the farm, you know, cut a piece of wood, maybe stick an old cloth on it. I made one by myself. Moses would be so proud of me. Moses, what do you think? Oh, no, no, no. That's terrible. You need something long and strong like this one. At least this one will be able to reach up to the level of the roofing and remove all the cobwebs. Oh, really? Uh. While Arthur dusts with a long, strong, homemade mop, I take down the old curtains to let the fresh air in. Next, we need to reset the feeders so the chickens have access to food all day. Kenchik recommend a good quality feed, such as unga. Out with the old, in with the new. Then, the drinkers made out of old jerry cans need replacing as they can be dangerous. Remember, your chickens need clean water, just like we do. And... There you go. Both the feeders and the drinkers need to be suspended so they don't get contaminated and also avoids wastage through spillage that will cost you extra money. It is recommended a ratio of one feeder for every 30 chickens and one drinker for every 50 chickens. 
Before we can try others' eggs, Dr. Moses said every chicken house should have a disinfectant foot bath at the entrance to avoid the spread of diseases. So Moses, you've been in there, yeah? Yeah, I've seen. What do you think? Uh, there's a good improvement. And uh, with the simple steps that you've taken, uh, feed is easily available. The birds are feeding well. Water is cleaner, so you can be sure they'll drink more and give you more production. The dust level, you've dusted the house and uh, it now looks good, which means the stress level now is going to go down. And the laying boxes you've repaired, so... So we expect 99%, is it? Yeah, and uh, you'll, you'll realize that uh, you don't have to do the big, big things. Just the simple, simple things that you normally ignore, which contributes to the production. Uh -huh. Yeah, I'm very happy of your work. And uh, I think the production of, of eggs will improve. I, as a farmer, I go into your instructions or improvements, I will expand more. Good, good. As you're thinking of production, you know what? I'm thinking of quality. Yeah. Ah. Oh. Mmm. Mm. Good. Excellent. Good. Excellent. Mm. Yeah. Whoa. Oh. It's been a busy day. Yeah, a very busy day, but I'm very excited because I learned so much from Kenchik today. Did you know that to get enough supply of eggs, you need to take care of your chickens. You need to give them enough water, enough food, and put them in a very, very clean environment. Because apparently chicken also get stressed. Really? Yes, just like human beings. And I went to the kitchen. I mean, smoke is really bad for you as for your health, and the kitchen was really smoky. So you build a new chimney where the smoke goes out and not back into the kitchen. And don't forget we still have to check on the oil palm trees to see what the problem is and be able to help out. Yep. The Shamba Shape Up team are back at Arthur's Shamba near Kakamega. So far, Arthur and Tony have learned some top tips from Kenchik and simple ways to improve egg production. And Naomi had help to improve the smoke problem in the kitchen for Arthur's wife, Priscilla. Another problem on Arthur's chamber where the birds attacking his palm oil plants. Let's see if we can help. Arthur, you're already here. Good to see you. Now, now, you keep telling me you have a problem with the birds, right? So how do we sort it out? You want us to help you out how? Oh, we scare them away like that, right? Well, you see what we can do, Arthur. You're quiet today. Arthur. Listen. Who is this? Oh, I was trying to scare the birds. You're trying to scare the birds? Of course. <laughs> Tony. I'm talking to Arthur. No, you're not. Arthur is here. I realize that. Now, no wonder he was quiet. Do the scarecrows really help chase away the birds? No, they don't help. Oh. Um, let me check out another idea. Yes. Then you can go and see Tony. Okay. Asawa. Thank you. Mrs. Geneveva Mambiri is a technical officer in oil crops and has come to look at Arthur's oil palm plantation and the problems, which are not just the birds. As I walked around uh, your farm, yes. I found out that uh, yeah, the, there is low soil fertility yes. and also your method of pruning is wrong yes. and uh, it is also causing uh, uh, fruit abortion. I can see some of the branches are just falling down by themselves. What could be the problem? The, the, the branches falling down is because of uh, low fertility mm -hmm. and also the drought. So any burning questions you have? Now what should I do now? The first thing you should do yes. is to make the basin, basin around the trees. Yes. And then the, the apply fertilizer and uh, manure Im to improve the soil fertility yes. so that the trees don't uh, look yellow the way they are uh, appearing now yes. and then the second thing is to check his pruning method uh, it is very important because if you prune the mother leaf yes. uh, and the nurse leaf together yes. 
the fruit that emerges will uh, abort. And by abortion, I mean the falling of premature fruits okay. Uh, okay. Uh, before they form the oil. Another thing I realized in your plantation, mm -hmm. the sanitation bit. Mm. After pruning, you leave the, the, the trash on, yeah. the, on, the, on the stem. Yes. And that one can lead to the, the ants can breed there. And after others done all that, what will his results be? He mm -hmm. will have a very good market because if he harvests a lot of oil, I mean uh, the correct amount of oil, mm. because from uh, one fruit mm. you will get one kilogram of oil yes. during your first harvest mm -hmm. at, uh, at five years. Yes. Mm -hmm. And as they progress in, uh, in age, yes. uh, from a big fruit you will get six between six to eight liters of oil. Wow. Mm. The other benefit will be that you will not buy cooking oil. Mm. And then also you will have a good supply of vitamin A because the oil is yellow mm. and it does not have cholesterol. Okay. Oh. Mm. Cholesterol oh. free. Very happy. Yeah. So I it envy will you. You're <laughs> going to be a very happy farmer. <laughs> yeah. The oil palm trees are showing nutrient deficiency in the soil. To make sure you have healthy soil, you can do the following. Take one bucket of farmyard manure and add one cup of DAP fertilizer. Mix it thoroughly and add around the basin of the plant. Repeat this every six months. This will result in healthy plants and a better harvest. Geneva then shows Arthur how to prune the palm oil tree while harvesting it correctly. The leaf that is holding the ripe fruit is called the mother leaf. This must be cut off while harvesting. You can tell the fruit is ripe as it will turn orange and fall from the tree. But what about the birds that attack and steal the fruit? Maybe Naomi has another idea. So what's going on? <laughs> well, I heard. When the sun shines on this CD and reflects the light, ah. this scares the birds away. Which musician is this? Doesn't matter as long as it scares the birds away, does it? Well, anything is worth a try. There! But in case the scarecrows and the CDs don't work, Geneva recommends chicken or coffee wire around the base of the tree to help protect the fruit. Let's hope it works. The kitchen had too much smoke which was a big problem for Arthur's wife Priscilla as she suffers from asthma. It's time for me to check up on the new chimney. Django, you've done a great job on the chimney. Yes, we have finished yeah. it now. I and can see you've made it higher. Is that all? I mean, is the problem over? We, we, no, we, have, we still have to move the chico inside in the center so that the smoke can get straight to the hole. Okay, and so that it doesn't, it, it goes right straight out? Yes. And it doesn't come back to the kitchen? No, it won't. Oh, that's very nice. <laughs> the ladies will really love this. Okay, yes. Well, the builders get to work on moving the jiko, which means the smoke goes up the chimney and not into the kitchen, Tony is dealing with a skin disease. I haven't got a skin disease, Naomi. One of others cattle has. Luckily, Dr. Benjamin Ruto, a veterinary officer from Coopers, has come to take a look. Dr. Ruto tells us that the disease is called dermatophilosis. This disease mostly affects the white parts of the cow and is spread by flies who lay eggs in the wounds. It is important Arthur and the doctor wear protective gloves to prevent the spread of the disease. If this disease could have been dealt with at the early stages, it could have been easily treated and would not have spread, saving money on medication. Now, what the help can you give to my cow? This one can be treated using some medicine and uh, regular nursing. We normally call tender love care, TLC. How does he give a cow tender loving care? In the morning, wake up, Come and examine, touch it the way I was touching. Okay. You saw it. Yeah. Touch it, feel it, where there is pain. Now you localize your attention, attention. on that side. Yeah. Not only in the morning, pass by in the morning, maybe even around at the noon, it's yeah. okay, and in the evening. evening. Come and, and see it and just some medication. 
will give you just for anointing or the putting on the affected parts. Now it's time to start the medication. Dr. Ruto is now showing Arthur how to clean the wound and disinfect it. Water is added to the copper sulfate. This is an antifungal, which means to stop the fungus from growing. This needs to be applied once a day until the wound is healed. The doctor came in and took the animal. What did he told you? He told me to, to cover the, the wound with the, its cow dung mm -hmm. uh, in order to prevent uh, more flies. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because using the cow dung to cover the wound is not, is not good because you assist now the, the flies to hatch more on that wound, then it's spread all over the, the body. Then healing oil is poured directly onto the wounds. This assists in the healing and prevents the flies from laying eggs. An antibiotic injection is also needed to help prevent the spread of the disease. This one is 20 milliliters, once a day for three days. The sooner you can get access to a vet, the quicker the animal can get well and may need less treatment, saving money. Also remember never to use cow dung on a wound. This will make it worse and spread to the whole body. Now this cow has had right treatment and Arthur has good advice on how to look after it. It should make full recovery. Don't forget, good management of your cattle results in healthy animals. Coopers recommend feed supplements like Cooper Cola, Maclick Super, Assault and Mineral Brick. And cattle must always have access to clean water. On the subject of good health, now the GECO has been moved to a better position. I'm going to see Priscilla to see what she thinks of the smoke-free kitchen. Priscilla, hey. <laughs> how are you? I'm fine. I can see you're checking out the kitchen, yeah, right? Yeah, I like it now. So what do you think? It is now good. Uh -huh. No smoke. No smoke. No, I don't, I don't Now I can come in freely and go out. Yeah, that's really nice. And it's even better for you because now you don't feel no. bad when you come in? No. The chest feels better. Yeah. Oh. In fact, I never used to come in when they are cooking. Oh, now you can. <laughs> yeah. This is really nice. Yeah. Priscilla is very happy with the smoke-free kitchen, but now it's time to talk about Arthur's big dream. Arthur, your vegetable garden looks very, very dry. What's been going on? I don't have enough water to, to irrigate. And uh, I've been having a dream all the time that if I could get a water tank storage in my farm, I could do better, better. Uh -huh. Yeah, and they plant more vegetables for marketing as well as for domestic consumption. Your dream has always yeah. been to have enough storage of water correct. to irrigate. Correct, correct. A water irrigation system can be very beneficial to production in the long run, but costs a lot of money to build. I call in the help of Lucy Guru, who is a business and financial advisor. Arthur shows her his records and accounts. Arthur would like to realize his dream of having a water irrigation project. And uh, he's been dreaming about this project for a very long time now. Can he realize his dream? Uh, sure. I think Arthur is a competent business person. And uh, that, can be, that can happen. What can I do to succeed my, my dream? I think one of the things that others should do is to be clear in terms of how much investment will go into the plan. Yes. Uh, I think you already have thought about that. Yes. Two, you need to know who would supply the equipment. Yes. Where you would place it. And then after you have done that, you need to work out a plan. So Lucy, what are the three main basic points? Should Arthur know before going to apply for a loan? You've got to know what you want to you invest in. You know what in. you want? Uh -huh. The second one? You have to know how much it will cost. How much it will cost? You have to know your repayment capacity in mm -hmm. terms of how much income is disposable okay. and that you can use to pay a loan. Uh -huh. And you have to know where to go to ask for the finances. Oh. It could be a bank, a microfinance, or any other financial institution that is within your reach. Arthur came to my office and uh, we went through 
how what he would need to invest in his irrigation scheme. Dig borehole, well, 10,000. Blicks, 200 pieces, 2,100. Sad, 3,000. Concrete, 7,000. For the plumber, 30,000. Electrician, wiring, 2,000. Uh, the total would be 279,835, approximately 280,000. I asked Arthur how he would get the funds. His savings? No, he had invested all of it in his business. But he remembered that his two sons had promised to support him with 50,000 each. Of the 280,000, less the 100,000, he would need 180,000, which he would borrow from the bank. So with a loan principal of 180,000, at 24% interest rate, then one would be expected to pay an interest rate of 43,600. If you take the 43,600 and add it back to the principal of 180,000, then you'd have a total of 223,200. If you take the total of 223,200 and you divide it by 12 months in a year, then you'd get 18,600 as the estimate that you'd pay to the bank. Others said he would be fine because his pottery business had expanded because of the improvement he has made in his farm. He also would triple the income from the hot catcher business and he's still doing the other types of farming. So he would be happy to take the loan and off he went to the bank. With a good business plan and financial advice, Arthur is now in a position to approach a bank for a loan. Let's hope he can make the investment to build his water irrigation system in the future. I would say it's been a successful joint effort in helping Arthur. Yes, you can see what good planning, hard work, and accepting expert advice can do to your farm. It can go a long way in improving your shamba. Let's go find out what Arthur and Priscilla think. Let's do that. Arthur now knows how to move forward and improve his egg business. The layers needed some home improvements. A clean house with lots of food and fresh water. A quick visit by a specialist means the health of his sea cow should improve very quickly. With good financial advice, Arthur's dream of a water irrigation system might actually be a reality in the future. Even though our efforts to scare away the birds was not very successful, his oil palm harvest will improve. Arthur and Priscilla, we are very grateful for being in your farm. It's been nice, it's been lovely. Priscilla, it was very nice meeting you, and now I can see you have three Arthurs. <laughs> Which one do you prefer? The original Arthur. The original Arthur? Yeah. You, <laughs> lucky <laughs> guy. <laughs> uh, it's been great. I hope you've learned a lot. Of course. Good? I've learned a lot. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm very grateful to Shemba. Shamba shape up team. Okay. Yeah. So your eggs will be more now. Of course. What will, what are you going to do with the products? Not only eggs. Uh. I think all sessions will will improve. Will improve everything. Yeah. Plus the financial advice will make you realize your dream. Of course. Uh huh. Yeah. Good. Good. <laughs> and yeah. together with you is going to be Priscilla. So Priscilla, what did you think about the chimney? Chimney is okay. Yeah. I like it now. I think it's better for my health. Yeah. No more smoke. Great. I think I will polish and it will remain as it was. Yeah, good, good, uh, good. I'm so happy for you. Thank you. Thank you too. Wonderful. Wish you the best on your farm. Thank you. <laughs> Koheri. Thank you. Okay, Koheri. Okay, Koheri. Okay. Koheri, Sarah. Koheri. Koheri. Thank okay, bye. Okay, bye. 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 You know, I'm sure Arthur has learned a lot from the experts and is going to use all that information on his farm and also to help the community. And as he said, he wants to leave this world a better place than he found it. And so it's been another successful day on Shampoo Shape Up. Please join us next time. Wow, what a shape up. If you'd like a reminder of all the information and expert advice we saw in this farm, please get in touch with us. Send us a text with the words below to 5606 and we'll make sure we send you a free leaflet that we've made just for you.